Hey everybody, and welcome to episode 146 of the show. We're going to start today's episode off by sharing some pretty cool stuff that's happening with addiction. First of all, in Florida, I thought you might like this one, Chris. Not because you're obsessed with CrossFit, because I know you don't do that, but uh, an owner of a Florida CrossFit has is helping addicts helping addicts, which I've never seen the term addicts twice in the title of an article. It looks kind of tacky, but addicts helping addicts. So what it is, is they have the owner of this particular CrossFit um, is in addiction recovery himself. And so are a bunch of the people that he knows. So they're doing CrossFit competitions and helping people to get sober and to get fit with, by giving them free CrossFit and free training. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, inspiring expensive. People. So, yeah, that's cool. Oh, it's expensive. I've never. Uh... Well, at least it was. I signed up in like 2012, maybe. Yeah, somewhere around there. And I signed up when I was blacked out and I forgot no that I did it. Yeah. And I never checked my credit card statements because I was always afraid of what I might find, which is not uh, rational. But it was during some of the heaviest drinking years I had. And then like six months later, I finally checked my credit card. and I was like, what is this CrossFit stuff? And I remembered walking in there. That was that was a scary thing. And it also was like shameful because I had wasted a bunch of money. I should have I could have gone to that place and changed my life. And I just didn't. It was like I was in a black hole for that entire six month period that felt like a, just a, a long nightmare. And I, you were I, open. I, even when I found that out, it took me another year and a half to quit. So and at that point, you were not only drinking heavily, but you were overweight, too. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was over 250 pounds. And I'm about six feet tall. And it wasn't a good 250 pounds. Yeah, it was high body fat, low muscle mass. That's right. Um, other exciting things in addiction news. I couldn't understand. The, there was a video on a news channel, and it was on a new pill that's currently in FDA trials. It did really well with mice, and they believe it's going to be tolerated in humans well as also. So it's a, a pill that may help reduce alcohol use. It's supposed to... I think it was called Indel 4. It was really, there was no article. It was just a video. By the way, I'll put all this stuff in the show notes for people that want to learn more. So you can have links to these exact articles. But I think it was called something like Indel 4. And it's a medicine that's in, like I said, in trials. Supposedly, it is helping to reduce both the frequency of drinking and the amount of alcohol consumed during each drinking episode. Uh, this video also showed a lady that was in a faith-based place in like Northern Kentucky. It was a faith-based program. It was really cool. It showed all these women that were living together and they just looked like they were doing really well. So it was, that was happy to see. Um, have you heard of that? I, Cause I didn't know no. there was any new stuff coming out for alcohol. Didn't say the mechanism of action. I couldn't find anything online about it, but I'm, not sure if I have the name right. The way the lady said the name of the medicine only one time, couldn't find anything on it. Interesting. Yeah, I, I know there are some new drugs in the pipeline with, you know, as far as research studies go. And the the only one I've been particularly trying to follow is the uh, uh, MC18, I think it's called, or is it 18MC? I get it back. 18MC. 18MC. Yeah. And that's a derivative of uh, psychedelic compounds. And without giving you the hallucination. So that one seems to have some promise. But I'll look into the other one. I, I always like to know mechanism of action. Otherwise, there's not much information. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't find. It was a pretty lame video, but it was an exciting. So this, the medicine sounded exciting. But this sounds maybe even more exciting than that medicine because it's natural. Uh, researchers in Finland say they've found a cure for hangovers. That involves using the amino acid L-cysteine. Uh, the only problem was that this particular study had a very low amount of participants. I don't think Finland's got a necessarily huge population. And also for the amount of alcohol they had to drink, a lot of the people couldn't even do it. So, but it was uh, supposedly in this study, L taking L-cysteine, I think it was up to 1600 milligrams a day, was shown to prevent either prevent hangovers or to greatly reduce hangovers. Now I'm not suggesting people go, okay, I can just go drink as much as I want and take a bunch of L-cysteine because 
This is very important. You always need to look into the studies you're looking at. And this particular study was paid for by a supplement company that makes L-cysteine. Mm. So if that's not a conflict of interest, I don't know what is. Uh, but I mean, finally, therapy, though, is really cool. Um, and oh, yeah, of course. I'm still learning about the benefits of amino acids that I've known about for a long time. So just a quick aside here. Uh, glycine is a is an amino acid that I've taken before, usually in a couple hundred milligrams dose, often blended with other amino acids or sometimes with herbs. You'll find glycine in some Macunapurians formulations. That's an herb that helps to increase dopamine. I've taken it with various things. I've, I've, it's probably been in some of my uh, recovery workout powders. It's in collagen. It's in bone broth. So it wasn't new to me, but I decided to take three grams of it in isolated form, just pure glycine. You can get that. I think it's the Now brand. I got it on Amazon for like $13 or whatever. And that's about three quarters of a teaspoon of pure glycine. And for the last two nights, I've taken that before bed. And I've been, you know, I've, I'm always talking about on this podcast, but how my remaining missing link, not for recovery, because I'm recovered from addiction, but for life optimization has been sleep and not necessarily the amount of sleep I get, but difficulty controlling when I go to bed because I just don't like going to bed. I have, it's, it's a kind of a high quality problem in, in some sense that I have so much that I want to do that I enjoy staying up after everyone goes to bed and no one bothers me and I can get more done. And it's just like the days are not long enough for me to do everything I want to do. However, on the flip side, that often means that I have to sleep later than I want to in order to start the next day. So what I found is with glycine, after about 30 minutes of taking three grams, I didn't feel drugged. It's not a drug, obviously, but it, it is a uh, it, it does have a calming effect similar to GABA in the brain. It builds up in the cerebrospinal fluid and it really calms down the nervous system. And obviously it's not addictive, um, but most people are deficient in it. If for you know, one reason for that is that we consume a lot of muscle meats rather than organ meats and bone broth. And that's where a lot of glycine is found in animal products. People who are vegan or vegetarian might also have a, a huge uh, benefit from taking glycine supplementally. And I, I just felt within 30 minutes like I wanted to go to bed. And I took it at uh, about, I don't know, between 11.30 p.m. and midnight uh, two nights ago, which was Friday night. And I usually get up at around 7, 7.30 on Saturday mornings to go to my yoga. And usually what that means is that I'm really tired because it's even if I try to go try to go to bed at midnight, I end up falling asleep at 1.30, waking up at 7. That's not enough sleep. But I, I was out by about midnight and I woke up at 7.30. Now, I would have felt better with nine hours of sleep, but I can't complain about seven, seven and a half on a night like that. And I had no desire to take a nap at all yesterday. Um, so then I took it again last night, had another night of great sleep. My dreams were kind of mystical and really it's like my, um, I had no, I, I don't typically have night issued like terrors or angst or bad dreams or nightmares almost never do. But, uh, I found that like I had crazy dreams, but I was really relaxed, like a really odd dreams. I don't remember what they were, but Anything that happened in those dreams, like my responsiveness emotionally was like muted in a way. It's like I, I felt good. I felt relaxed, even if there were rainbow, rainbows and, and uh, uh, UFOs flying around and little alien creatures or hobbit creatures in the woods. None, none of it was scary. It was just like, huh, that's cool. And I feel good right now. Like that's kind of how I felt, even though I don't remember the exact content of my dreams. I know they were strange. So anyway, that's a brief aside about glycine. I'm, here I am six plus years after quitting drinking, and I'm still discovering <laughs> that sometimes the magic is in the dosage, even with things that I've taken prior. And I'd read that glycine was great for sleep, but I, when I had taken it before, either in bone broth or collagen or on its own in, in a much lower dose, I just concluded incorrectly that I probably wasn't deficient in it or probably couldn't benefit from it because I didn't take a high enough dose. And I think that's the same thing also that a lot of people find tragically with like L-glutamine. I've had clients who have signed up for coaching and they'll say, you know, I tried L-glutamine. It didn't help me. It's like, all right, how much do you try? hundred milligrams. I have some clients who need 15 grams a day of L-glutamine. 
Now, I'm not saying that everyone needs that. That's a pretty benign amino acid. You know, you wouldn't want to be taking 15 grams a day of like tryptophan or 5-HTP or the syrup, right? But glutamine is pretty, uh, pretty ubiquitous supplement almost. Bodybuilders take it for uh, building muscle and, and it's good for the immune system. It's the most abundant amino acid. So that's just my, my aside. I'm, I'm, I would love to take something like L-cysteine and, and figure out what the dosage is for me. Obviously, I don't have hangovers, uh, but there can always be benefits, uh, potential benefits that we're unaware of if we haven't discovered the right dosage. So that's my, my brief message for right now is that the magic is often in the dosage. And that's why trial and error is so important with nutrient repair and with uh, nutrient optimization. A good resource that goes along with what we're saying, too, is at juliarosscures.com. On the top menu there, there's uh, questionnaires you can take. One of them is our mood questionnaires where you can uh, – it's, it's a digital thing. Then you tally up your score, and it shows you whether you're likely deficient in catecholamine types of neurotransmitters, uh, whether you're deficient in thyroid, whether you're deficient – in endorphins, whether you're deficient in GABA, whether you're deficient in serotonin. And that's a cool little gauge for people that have no clue where to start with amino acid therapy. That helped me a lot back in the day and even uh, more recently too. But Dr. Charles Gant in his book, End Your Addiction Now, says that a lot of substance users uh, and especially people with opioid dependence are deficient in glycine and L-glycine and L-cysteine. So these are and these are ones like you were saying that they're not high in food things like glycine and cysteine and taurine these are like it's hard to have food sources of all these so sometimes it's important to take them I wrote some notes Chris and I've been doing the bone broth protein at night with the cysteine heavy natural cysteine in it cysteine I'm gonna or get glycine that. glycine in it glycine now I'm like talking about these things are blending together I'm gonna do the glycine. The now brand, that brand's so cool because it's really high quality and it's way less expensive. Than I, love, I love now brand. It's good stuff. Yeah, so I'm going to get some now glycine powder. I also like um, MSM powder, not for sleep, but for, um, it's like a, from, from sulfur and anything that's from sulfur, MSM. I can't remember what it stands for, but not high levels. Not confused of- with MSG. Right. Definitely not MSG. MSM powder. They're act- it's actually MSM crystals, not really a powder. It looks cool, but I take uh, a, like a teaspoon once or twice a day. And it's just supposed to be really good for inflammation, good for your skin. So yeah, amino acids, kick butt, supplements are great. There's one other thing that was in the news that I want to talk about. Online gaming and online gambling has gone, spiked way up during the pandemic. Uh, oh, yeah, there was one other thing, too. So at the beginning, they were recommending people. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I remember a lot of the news stations were saying, yeah, this is a great time to play more video games and to. And so but now it's gotten really bad, um, particularly with kids to the online gaming, because it's a way for them to stay socially connected. You know, they got their headsets on or they're on their smartphones or tablets and they can play online multiplayer video games where they can actually talk and communicate with other people. So that's gone up. Well, and now they're to the matrix. I mean, the, I don't yeah. think there's any replacement for for one on one hanging out, unfortunately, as we just saw mm-hmm. in California. I mean, now I'm back in Georgia after a week long trip to San Diego I really enjoyed those podcasts where we were sitting next to each other. I mean, technically now we're interacting and it's more fun than than sitting on my couch, although I wouldn't be doing that anyway. But uh, it's not nearly as fun as being with a person. And, you know, there's just like there's an energy exchange. And I'm afraid that we might we're at risk of losing that. Uh, and obviously the pandemic is concerned for many people. And uh on that note, I did. I just I got tested for COVID when I came back, just because I'd been in California for a week, and I wasn't reckless, but I wasn't like super cautious. You know, I wasn't like sanitizing my hands after touching any surface or getting out of Ubers. At some point, I just had you have to live your life, <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if it was just luck or um, if I'm maybe not as susceptible genetically or whatever. This is the third time I've been tested and it's negative. 
Uh, but you know, with Thanksgiving coming up, I didn't want to have my parents and family friends get infected because I got something and showed no symptoms. But maybe it's a testament to all the vitamin D3 that I got out there in the sun and the ocean and and uh, good sleep. And even though my diet slipped a bit when I was out there because I can't not eat those awesome tacos. And I actually forgot to go to the taco stand in La Jolla, which is which I'm, I'm pissed about. I'm going to have to remedy that next time I'm there. But as I was saying to you also, in addition to, to lucking out and not getting coronavirus, uh, I had a rash on my hand, which you can't see. It just looks like a normal hand now. That was literally bleeding and scabbing. It was eczema that I got last April. And it was kind of on and off for a while. And it didn't get, you know, they gave me hydrocortisone. Um, the dermatologist said, well, you know, maybe it'll probably go away. I asked what the root cause was. He said, there's no root cause. It just happens to some people, which I always find to be an, an interesting uh, <laughs> uh you know, way to, way to frame any illness. Sounds like he's done a lot of research. Into this. Yeah, he's I, honestly, he's a great dermatologist, but very set in that, um, you know, mindset, I guess. And so an anacetylcysteine, interestingly, was the first thing that helped somewhat clear it up. It wasn't totally gone, but it was like 80% gone. And then being out in the sun with the beach and earthing helped to clear it up as well. So to continue my series of hopefully somewhat related tangents here, I have an earthing thing that I got from Amazon. Uh, it's actually, it's an earthing mat. So here's the mat for anyone watching on YouTube on the fit recovery. YouTube. Hi, my name's Matt, everybody. Here's uh, the mat. You know, this is the mat and that's the mat. And uh, there's a cord that plugs into your outlet, but you can also plug it into a wristband. So there's a little thing on here. I apologize to anyone who knows what this is already, but I didn't know how it worked until I opened the box. But this cord can also plug into this mat and you can hang out on it. Apparently, pets like it as well because they're more sensitive to that kind of um, the energy from the earth. And I just put this on 20 minutes ago. So I don't know, you know, I don't feel any differently. But it is nice to hopefully get some of the same benefits that may have cured my random, probably stress induced or lack of sleep induced eczema uh, issue. But I thought it was also interesting that that I was able to maintain good health for, you know, actually improve my health for a week despite eating tortillas all the time. I'm sure I'd feel even better if I wasn't, but um, you know, there's a certain subjective well-being to having your your vacation sheet meals. Yeah, on vacation, uh, I go all out on vacation. I don't, I don't, I don't hold back. I love to have fun on vacation. It's like woohoo! I'll eat whatever the heck I want, and then come back and get right back to it. Yep. Uh, despite knowing about the benefits of earthing and grounding for a lot of years now, maybe even seven years, something like that, and knowing about those grounding mats, earthing mats, or and all the other technology they have, and how inexpensive it is, I kind of feel like a fool that I still don't have one. You should get I mean, one. Like, I mean, I can't yeah. endorse it necessarily. I just put this on, and I just got the mat, um, and it. I don't remember what the brand is, but it's pretty easy. If you search Earthing Matt on Amazon, I just chose the one with the highest reviews. It wasn't even that expensive. Um, I had a client recently who has a fancy one. It's called a Biomat. It has like amethyst crystals in it, which it looked like a fancier mat, maybe better quality. I'm not sure what the amethysts do. Um, yeah, and that was that was definitely more expensive, but I just figured I'd start with this and see mm -hmm. see what the benefits are. Because earthing, I've, I have experienced noticeable benefits whenever I can take the jet ski out to a, there's an uninhabited island out here. Um, one of many reasons I'm happier now than when I lived in the middle of Manhattan. And I just go walk on the beach. If I do that for like an hour, it's if I have any joint pain from working out, if I have any, maybe a mild headache from whatever stress or sleep deprivation, it just goes away. Uh, it, it feels not dissimilar from when you eat like a really antioxidant rich meal and you start to feel a little bit subjectively better. Some of that could be placebo effect, in which case I'll take it. But I just know there's a benefit. Now, I live near golf courses now, which is cool that I can I can walk on the, the golf cart paths at night. Uh, but I'm wary of whatever pesticides they might be putting on the golf course. So this year, this past year, I was really trying to optimize my home, especially with two dogs that also are dependent on me for their health as well. 
and I got some really high quality uh, air filters. Um, it's called Molecule with a K and uh, M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E. And they're expensive, but they're actually used in hospitals to filter out COVID from the air. That's how powerful they are. They can filter out bad chemicals. So my thing was, if I'm going to live near a golf course, I want my air quality to be as good as possible, not to mention the pet dander that gets in the air as well. Uh, so that and finding a way to earth, which now I'm, I'm kind of earthing indoors, or if I, if I make it to that uninhabited island off the coast of Georgia here, then, then I can earth. But it's not as easy as when I'm in when I'm in San Diego and I can just go walk on the beach and there's some, something really satisfying about that. I've, I've studied from really, really smart holistic doctors that a, a lot of them will say the same thing that most mental and physical health disorders are either caused entirely or in part by either free radicals and or inflammation. He was saying things from everything from, you know, a sprained ankle to a sore throat to anxiety to depression and, and on and on. And so when I learned that, I was like, okay, so some two big health benefits should be really focusing on having lots of antioxidants, limiting free radicals, maximizing powerful antioxidants, limiting inflammatory causing foods and other things, and take lots of natural anti-inflammation stuff. What's cool about earthing when your feet are on the surface of the earth, especially on uh, wet sand or soft sand or wet grass or regular grass, those are my favorites, or dirt, it reduces free radicals, it reduces inflammation a lot, and they think that it helps your body uh, kind of harmonize with the biorhythm of the earth's energetic vibration, which makes sense because throughout evolution for for just eons and eons we were barefoot on the surface of the earth in the outdoors getting lots of sunshine and so nowadays our modern way of living is totally cut off from that if people just if people just did a few things like low-hanging fruit walk for 30 minutes a day barefoot or use a grounding mat for 30 minutes or more Get an adequate amount of sunlight on a regular basis or take vitamin D3 with K2 and then drink plenty of water. That's Most people can make huge health strides, physical and mental health strides, simply by beginning to earth, beginning to get enough sunlight if they're not already doing so, optimizing hydration. Those three things are so easy and take almost no time, especially right now you're grounding and earthing in net time, no extra time. i absolutely love doing things that don't take any more time. So that's why I do breathing exercises when I'm driving places, because it doesn't take me any extra time out of my day. Yeah, I do six seconds in, six seconds out through the nose only uh, when I'm driving, when I can remember. And also when I'm sitting in the sauna or when I'm trying to go to sleep, I'll just, I'll say, all right, six seconds in, six seconds out. I don't need to focus on who I need to call tomorrow or what I'm going to have for lunch tomorrow or what time I need to get the dogs after MMA on Thursday. That When that stuff starts flying through my head, I almost have, I think I might have a neural pathway now that's like six seconds in, six seconds out. It's all of these things together. And I was really skeptical about the earthing or grounding until I saw that study, which we should include in the show notes. It's pretty easy to find. If you, I don't remember who did the study, yeah. but if you Google earthing or grounding study or earth medicine, something like that. Earth medicine study. Yeah. Usually when people start talking about harmonizing with the biorhythm of the earth, my, my, uh, uber skeptical, rationalistic, uh, devil's advocate brain goes, ah, bullshit. But, uh, that's it, it. I can feel it. And, uh, and they found benefits for people with insomnia, anxiety, chronic pain, there was actually a really interesting podcast. I think it was Ben Greenfield's podcast a while back, and I wish I could remember the guy's name, but he's an, he's a, an expert in holistic medicine and I think pain management. And his big thing was to walk barefoot in nature if you have chronic pain. I'm not an expert in that. I don't want to you know mislead anyone in case that's not the right solution. Maybe it's not the right short-term solution, but... It would seem to me that people have not much to lose 
assuming there aren't rattlesnakes around or pesticides on a on a golf course by incorporating earthing into their routine. And the way I, I, I understand from my layman's perspective about earthing that it works is in the same way that a, an antioxidant donates an electron to a free radical to neutralize it. So you're getting that same result from the negative ions that are roaming the earth and particularly in the ocean as well. That's why the ocean is such a good form. The electrons. Donating an electron. Right. So then you're you're neutralizing those free radicals. Um, and, and so the, the charge is becomes you know, improved. And I, I don't understand atomic physics or anything beyond that level. <laughs> so I won't get into it. But uh, that would be a cool thing to study if I you know, had, had more time. There are so many things. This, this goes back to my I had a conversation with a friend the other night who actually accompanied me to, to San Diego for several days. He grew up there and saw his family. And we were talking about how how many subjects there are that would be fun to do like self study, and I don't know if it's because we're we're past the phase where it's cool to party all the time. He voluntarily reduced drinking after he saw what alcohol did to me. He still might have a drink here and there, but very little. He doesn't have much of an addictive tendency at all, um, and he's just one of those guys. He he can if. He can also fall asleep within five seconds on command, which I think is like a gift. That's at least as 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 uh, much of a gift as like a high IQ is. If you can do He's that, and no more just, just to be rested all the time. I mean, he doesn't even know what sleep deprivation is like unless he has to get up for an early flight or something. But um, so anyway, he's got all that going for him, but still reduced alcohol. And we were just saying, like, you know, there aren't enough hours in the day. There's not there's not enough days in the week or the month or the year, and you know, we could spend, it would be fun to spend a year studying physics or studying like cybersecurity or studying like how to grow food, how to grow your own food or regenerative farming or just all these things or, or, or weird stuff, you know, UFOs. And there's so much stuff out there that's weird and worth knowing about. And uh, it's just yet another reason that for me, alcohol just totally fell off my priority list. Because I, I have vivid memories of when I used to try to drink and then I would, I would try to write something profound because you get that weird sense of uh, grandeur or delusional uh, promise or a sense of possibility when, you have, when you're a couple drinks in. And then you go to, 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 to make it happen. In my case, to write. Maybe some people can paint. I can't draw a stick figure, but I can imagine a, a famous alcoholic painter, uh, maybe Van Gogh or something. Um, getting ready to paint the masterpiece after a few drinks and then having a few more just to make it even better. And then waking up the next morning, you know, over the, you know, over a bunch of paint you know, on, on his hands or whatever. For me, it was just over uh, pen marks on my hands from where I'd fallen. My face had fallen into my hands on my pen uh, in my, with my notebook and I couldn't read anything, but you know, that's, that's kind of the alternative. If you think about it for people in early recovery who are wondering if it's worth it, to to quit drinking or in language that I don't condone to give up alcohol as if it's some kind of sacrifice, which it's not because by definition, a sacrifice is giving up something of of higher value in exchange for something of lower value. So, no, it's not it wasn't a sacrifice. There's so much cool stuff out there that deserves to be studied and and talked about, I think. And if, if I seem if I sound frenetic or ADD on this podcast. That's why it's because my mind likes to fire in all sorts of different directions. <laughs> I love it, dude. And the way I was talking about the earthing biorhythm, yeah, it sounded kind of wooey woo, but that study that you mentioned that was written by very, very intelligent people with uh, MDs and PhDs, they actually make it sound the opposite of woo woo. It's so scientific. Most of it, I couldn't even understand. It was so scientific uh, i think the father of earthing in america i think his name's clint ober uh, i could be getting his name wrong but i think that's it there's a documentary on amazon prime called the earthing movie which i didn't finish because it wasn't that great but it was kind of cool for anyone that doesn't know anything about earthing uh, they might really enjoy it i read a book on it many 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 years ago i didn't finish that either because it was like you know like I, I haven't read any books on breathing either because I, instead of reading a whole book, once you said the the takeaway from the book you read, it's like breathe in slowly through your nose and breathe out slowly through your nose. And that's what I've seen on, on TED Talks as well. 
I got an idea. But Breath by James Nestor is a fantastic book. It's it What's is the author's name? Uh, James Nestor or Nestor. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's N E S T O R. He he was interviewed on Joe Rogan, uh, and that is like the breathing equivalent for me in terms of how much I'm a fan of it as the Why We Sleep book by uh, Matthew Walker, PhD. So both of those guys are really good talking about the basics, you know, breathing, sleep, things we take for granted and we think we know how to do, but we don't. Yeah. And they're not, uh, people often don't start focusing on those, even though that's where you're going to get the best benefits is that low hanging fruit, breathing, how you're breathing, water intake, sleep habits, nutrition. Those are like some of the low hanging fruit, but they don't sound sexy, right? Oh, breathing exercises. Oh, physical exercise. No, people want to take pills. People want to people want to apply gels, sprays, sublinguals. People that are used to drinking or taking a drug, whether they're snorting it, swallowing it, smoking it, shooting it, inhaling it, all those different things, they're used to taking something to change their state, change their physical and emotional state. And so that's why it's so such a natural thing for them to go, okay, what can I take to help me feel better? The question is rarely, what things can I do with my own body to make me feel better? And, you know, that's fine because I do think at the beginning it's easiest to just start taking some of the right supplements, you know, adding those because then you start to feel noticeably better. And from a better state, you have more resources in your brain to go, okay, now I can start implementing some of these breathing exercises or I can go get a CrossFit or other gym membership and actually go instead of have a thousand dollar bill after six months like Chris did here or some, whatever it was. I'm not sure. Something like that. Yeah. Wow. Wow, That's expensive. Maybe more. Remember that book I mentioned maybe a month ago? Uh, What was it? Psycho cybernetics. Yeah. On self image psychology. Well, So I'm listening to that audible. It's really long and I'm getting towards the end and it keeps getting better and better and better. Now, this book, Psycho Cybernetics, has been recommended to me for for years and years and years. I can't remember just how many people I've heard, people like Tony Robbins and so many other people. I guess Psycho Cybernetics was like the revolutionary book back in its day on teaching people how the mind works, how the subconscious mind works. It's really the whole book is about how to optimize your thinking, how to optimize your beliefs. It's about emotional maturity. It's about how your self image creates your life. Really impressive. I'll put it in the show notes. I highly recommend Psycho Cybernetics. Just absolutely. The beginning was good, but. I'll admit I wasn't sold on it, which is why it kind of took me a while to listen to. But about halfway through, it just started to just blow my mind with amazing things. And, you know, some of it was stuff I've learned before. But one thing I love about our show is we talk about a lot of the same stuff um, on kind of a regular basis. But what's great about that is repetition is the mother of skill. So even though people might listen to an episode and go, oh, they're just talking about a bunch of stuff. I've heard all these in other previous episodes. It's great to continue to hear that same stuff because even if somebody knows all the things we're talking about, I can almost bet for sure that they're not doing a lot of those things. Um, It's in the application of applying knowledge that actually creates change. When I first started reading books, um, I didn't I would just read right through them and I wouldn't really practice any of this stuff. So now when I learn things, I try to apply that knowledge if it seems like a good idea. For sure. Yeah. I, I'm going to get that audiobook <clears throat> because I've been, I've listened to all the podcasts I can listen to you know, on the flights out to and back from, from California. And uh, you know, I think there's, it's a never ending process of trying to figure out the bio psycho social spiritual pillars, as we always say. And even at, at you know, six years since six years is nothing compared to 15 or 25. I, I, I can't wait to have the kind of insight that I'll have then. Hopefully I'll have read thousands of books and listened to thousands of interviews with experts and podcasts and audiobooks, et cetera. Uh, but 
I'm always learning something. Every month I learn something. And while you were talking, it just occurred to me that, uh, you know, one of the cool things about being addiction free, alcohol free, whatever you want to call it, is with a clear mind, you can wake up and you can serendipitously and unexpectedly encounter something, whether it's a book or something someone tells you that changes your life. Uh, I mean, at some point, someone told me about Tony Robbins book. I think the first one I read was Unlimited Power and then uh, Awaken the Giant Within. Those books changed my life. At some point, I think I read about in an article somewhere how to stop worrying and start living. And I, I think I probably recommended that book to thousands of people, if you include the people that have bought it because of my online course or coaching and, and just random articles I've mentioned that in. So, and that's a fantastic book for anyone who worries too much. And those are just books, you know, and then there's stuff like, like earthing things that I, I now try to incorporate into my routine because of a study that I read and ends up changing my life. So I wanted to mention something that you had actually uh, mentioned to me before this podcast, or at least emphasize it. Um, it's probably not a surprise to anyone, but you said there's a, that new study in uh, JMA, or it's J-A- J-A-M-A. Journal of American Medicine Association, JAMA. Yes, uh, JAMA. I'll say JAMA. Uh, showing that compared to this time last year, there's a 42% increase in heavy drinking among females, with heavy drinking being defined as four or more drinks in a two-hour period. So that is pretty crazy. And you know, right when you had sent that to me, I had just received some emails and actually course comments in the online course and um, a text message from a client, some, most of whom were actually female, about how they're doing so well at this point. So it, it occurred to me there might be people out there thinking like everyone's in a hopeless spot, you know, that the pandemic goes on. People are talking about a gloomy winter or more lockdowns or new strains or mutations or deaths going up or whatever, but it's never too late to decide to take control of your own situation, to start being proactive instead of be reactive. Um, one of my coaching clients texted me this morning saying that she just did three miles at the fastest pace she likes to run that she's run in 10 years. And I was thinking like, that's, that's amazing. We have someone else in the online course who's made it seven months at this point, which means that they've alcohol free. And they're feeling good and looking forward to what's to come. And, you know, that's all that's that's almost the entire length of this pandemic, while other people have been at the same time dipping down back into you know negative spirals and drinking and, uh, you know, heavy drinking. And every time I see a study about drinking numbers, I assume that the problem is at least one and a half times worse than it is, because I assume these are self-reported numbers. And yeah. most people are either in denial to other people, or they're even worse in denial to themselves about how much they're drinking. If you'd asked me how much I drank at the height of my drinking, I would not have told you honestly that I that I was drinking a fifth a day or if by the end of it, a handle a day. I would have said, you know, I have a few drinks, you know, mostly socially, sometimes, you know, just to take the edge off. I don't know, maybe probably too much, maybe like six or eight, maybe 10 drinks a day. But then I have weeks where I don't drink at all, so I don't have a problem. So that, that's the problem with these self-reported numbers. If I if I would have fallen into the six to eight drinks category by my own reporting, and I was drinking a handle a day, then uh, then I think there are some serious problems out there. But the good news and the the counterpart, which I think is important, is that there are people who are doing incredibly well who have taken this time to become proactive, starting often with supplementation and trying to find some center point in their lives to you know some whether it's support from a spouse or close family, but some grounding influence, and then also filling their minds with really good information. That same client who texted me about her, her victorious running achievement uh, had been listening to like a loop of Tony Robbins and um, also the videos in my course. I have like 20 hours of videos in there and all sorts of uplifting things, podcasts about about, uh, you know, self-improvement and just filling her minds with those things. And she had turned off the news several weeks ago. <laughs> and that incidentally, so glad you're mentioning but, it. yeah, that's when she quit. I mean, and she's, um, you know, at this point, 
just continuing onward and I, I don't want to give too much information, but that point where she stopped watching the news and started filling her mind with useful and uplifting messaging coincided with her getting away from alcohol and, um, you know, and the benefits just compound after that. So people can absolutely do this. You don't want to be reactive. You got to be proactive. Um, there's no better time than now. I know it might seem odd to quit drinking the week before Thanksgiving or a couple of days before Thanksgiving, but, uh, I think also a, a dose of caution is urged for people who aren't planning on quitting quite yet, or you're going to wait till after Thanksgiving, be very careful because uh, Thanksgiving is a time where normal people drink like alcoholics. And same is true of Christmas and a lot of holidays. And I know of people who have, who have passed away from alcohol poisoning during Thanksgiving. There was actually a guy I went to college with who had a secret alcohol problem, passed away on Thanksgiving. I don't like scare tactics, so I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I like to say, you know, if you're not able to quit by then, or if you're tapering, just stick to the taper. You know, don't, don't, you don't use it as an excuse to uh, go into blizzard holiday mode. You know, it's, it is a holiday, but uh, don't do that to yourself. Uh, some of my worst memories of working in finance were the day after Thanksgiving going in there. And luckily, usually my boss was off. I think I would have gotten fired if they could have seen me in there. But just totally bloated, feeling like hell, sense of impending doom, heart rate through the roof, cold sweat on my forehead, weird tingling in my hands and, and extremities. I don't wish that on anyone. So, you know, as I as we say, never too late to be proactive and at the very least come up with a plan because that's uh, that's the first step to figuring it out. Very few people, although some people do, very few people just spontaneously figure out a problem like addiction. Uh, usually there's a there's a period of building resolve and planning and then picking a day and, and starting to execute it. And even if you have slips, which most people do, as long as you see that as feedback rather than failure, you'll figure it out. You, It's really cool. You touched on two things that I actually wanted to talk about. And we didn't even plan this out. You mentioned the, the news, turning off the news. Uh, I read an article recently, and I almost created my own article on the same thing. Election stress disorder. We have done research. Yes, there's a term for it. Starting around 2019, you know, getting up to an election year. Um, rates of election stress disorder spiked way up. And now currently... Holy moly, it seems like almost every adult is prone to it. But I deleted my YouTube app off of my phone maybe five days ago, six days ago. And that's in the mornings for like when I was drinking my tea, I would watch certain election stuff, see what's going on. A lot of it was comedy skits on that. Um, but but since I've turned all that off, like I haven't consumed any new stuff. I do listen to YouTube music on my laptop when I'm working, but I'm not going on there on my phone to like watch news stuff. And I got to say, uh, now that I don't have any of that stuff going in my brain, my outlook, like I'm not looking at America the same way as I was when I was watching the news and I wasn't watching it a lot, but even like 30 minutes of uh, news media a day, a lot of it was just comedy. Like I was saying, but even that it like fills my head with stuff where I'm thinking a certain way. So now I've gone on this phase where I'm really just trying to get back into writing mastery. I want to get so now I'm like all my stuff is focused on my health, my family, and really, really creating a lot of great content in the form of not just our normal podcast, but I finally, for the first time in over six years of uh, since I went into business with my first website, I finally have a blogging uh, upload schedule, content schedule. I've always just kind of just done it whenever. Uh, and there have been phases where I've done tons of articles, phases where I haven't done any. But now Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on opiateaddictionsupport.com forward slash blog. And so it's cool because now I'm as a writer, I feel like I'm a way different writer than I was even six months ago, certainly a year ago, my gosh. And compared to 2014, when I started blogging about uh, uh, opioid addiction recovery at that time. I'm a completely different 
writer, like everything I know is expanded and altered. My beliefs are different. And so I've kind of gone on this path of really just focusing, solely focusing, narrowing my focus right before it included the news and it included certain other things. And now my focus is just getting super narrowed to the absolute essentials. It's called essentialism. I'm doing digital essentialism, or you could call it digital minimalism and kind of life essentialism. Like I'm only concentrating and focusing on the absolute essentials for fulfillment, for finances, for health, for love, and for fun times and, and laughing. Can't one up that. Sounds like a good <laughs> place to stop. We'll be back in a couple of days. Perfect. Thanks, guys.